But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. I'll read verse 7 again. But the full, the full soul loatheth in honeycomb, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the word of God. Lord, help us <clears throat> to listen to it carefully to this morning and uh, to be uh, challenged by it, to be changed by it, to be directed by it, to be convicted by it. Whatever the need is in our heart, Lord, help us to open our hearts and, be, and not be distracted by anything going on in our minds, in our life, around us, but be totally focused on what you have to say so that you can speak to our heart. If there's someone here who does not know your son, we ask you to help them to be focused on Jesus and salvation. And also, I pray for the same for the kids down at Junior Church. Give the preacher what they need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 7. We read, The full soul loatheth and honeycomb. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. And I want to talk to you this morning on this subject, what the hungry soul wants. What the hungry soul wants. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the Bible. And Lord, I pray that you'd feed us now from your word. And uh, thank you for the fact that uh, you want to do that. And when you, we open our hearts and let you feed us, uh, we get what we need. And it, gets, it gives us strength, gives us help. So please, Lord, help us this morning not to be put any, anything else in our lives, in our minds, focus on anything else except your word. And uh, Lord, I pray you speak to every heart here. In Jesus' name, amen. There are two types of Christians that come to church on Sunday. First of all, there's the hungry Christian. This one really wants to learn. He or she, I'll use the, you just use the pronoun he, but I mean he or she, he has gotten saved and knows He's going to heaven, no doubt about that. But he wants a different life, a better life than the one he has. Jesus has changed his destination, and he figures since Jesus has changed his destination, he can certainly change his life. The Holy Spirit has moved into his body and has placed a desire to learn the Bible inside of him. <clears throat> he knows this book has the answer as to how he can have a happy, profitable life. It has the answer as to how he can overcome the bad habits, like gossiping, cussing, smoking, drinking, lying, <clears throat> that, that he has developed over the years. <clears throat> he knows this book can teach him about a God who loves him and can do marvelous things for him. It can also teach him how he can do things for God. So because of that, he's hungry to learn. Now notice, Solomon said in our text, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Basically, that means <clears throat> to a soul that really is hungry, no matter what he learns, even if it's bitter or hard to take, it is still sweet. It is still enjoyable. It still makes them feel good. Let me make it plain. A hungry soul can take hard preaching as well as easy preaching. He can take preaching against sin. He can take preaching against his sin, as well as a message on the goodness or love of God. Why? 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 Because he's hungry. He's hungry. The second type of Christian that comes to church on Sunday is the full Christian. This one is satisfied. He's gotten saved. He's learned some things, but he's stopped. He's gone as far as he wants to go. He's learned all he wants to learn. Our text says, the full soul loatheth in honeycomb. This means the satisfied soul, the one who has learned all he wants to learn, by the way, not all he needs to learn, all he wants to learn, he tramples or steps on even the sweet things from God's word. Now this book is full of sweet things. Full of sweet things. But it also has some bitter things in it. And God commands me to preach both of them. A hungry soul says, I don't care which one it is, I need to hear it, and I want to hear it. A full soul says, I'm here because it's Sunday, but I don't learn anything, and <clears throat> in his heart, he takes the word of God and tramples it underfoot. Let me just give you a verse, Psalm chapter 50, verse 17. This is what the hungry soul does. The Bible says in Psalm 50, verse 17, seeing thou hatest instruction, and castest my words behind thee. That's what a full soul does. <clears throat> this morning I'm going to show you how to make progress in your life. 
how to break habits, enjoy good, solid Bible preaching, as I show you what a hungry soul wants. Now, we're going to look at this verse a little more closely uh, as we go through this. I said, first of all, a full soul is a satisfied soul. He is full because of some sin in his life that has filled him up. He is full because he allowed the world, the things of the world, to fill him up. He is full because he does not want to change. So he <clears throat> tramples or hates or suppresses, as Psalm 27 puts it, I mean Proverbs 27 puts it, an honeycomb. This means the healthy, good food of God. He tramples it or hates it or suppresses it in his life. He only, not only hates hard, sin-naming preaching, but he hates sweet preaching. It's preaching about how God is love, and God is merciful, and God is forgiving, and God cares. He turns a deaf, critical ear to all of it. He finds negative in everything he hears. He is satisfied. He has all he wants. So, this person rejects everything new that they hear. They don't read because they're full. They don't get blessed by the music because they're full. They don't listen to the preaching of the Word of God because they're full. They may sit here and have and look up here, but they're not listening. Why? Because they're full. They don't pray because they're full. They don't want any more spiritual food because they're full. They say they aren't getting fed. And the problem is they're not hungry because they are full of the world and themselves. They're not full of God's word <clears throat> because you never can be full of God's word when you're full of sin, when you're full of rebellion, when you're full of the world. They might even come to church, but only because all they have is religion. They have no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. There's no home for him. They're full. <clears throat> now let me give you the results of being full. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 11. Again, there's two people that come to church, even the Liberty Baptist Church. There's the hungry soul, and there's the full soul. <clears throat> the hungry soul, full soul, loatheth in honeycomb. No matter if it's sweet stuff, they loathe it. Any kind of spiritual food, they loathe it. Why? They're full. <clears throat> have, you ever, have you ever been really hungry, and somebody puts a plate of food in front of you, and you devour it? to your full, they can bring the exact duplicate of that plate to you right after that, and you loathe it. Get it out of my sight. Ugh, it's sickening. The same food you were starving over. You're not starving over anymore. It makes you sick to even think about it or look at it because you're full. That's the same way it is with the Word of God. When you get full, and not, not full of spiritual food, in this case, you fill, fill yourself with the world and fill yourself with sin and fill yourself with yourself. You're full. And you're not hungry at all. So even, even the, the sweet things of the word of God, you loathe it. You, there's no room for it in your life. The thought of it makes you sick. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 11, it says, In houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, in wells dig which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full, then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So when you, when you are full, when you get full, one of the things you do, whether you're full of yourself, full of the world, full of your material things, you forget the Lord. And when you forget the Lord, you go after man's doctrine, not God's doctrine, and it winds up ruining your life. But you forget the Lord. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 12 through 14. I mean, really, people do that. They, they're not hungry for the word of God, and they, they're full, so they forget about him. Uh, they don't, he's not where they, he ought to be in their life at all. They make so many of their decisions in their life. They do so many things in, the, in their life during the week where the God's not even a part of it. They don't think about him at all. They forget. In Deuteronomy chapter 8, Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verses 12 through 14, it says, 
lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses and dwelt therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God, which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So again, these people were full of themselves, full of material things, and you know what happened? Not only did they, they forget God, but they got proud. I can handle this on my own. I can handle life on my own. Now, just let me tell you something. When you get full spiritually, to the, I mean, when you get full, when you don't have any room for spiritual things, you're so full of sin, so full of yourself, so full of the world, that you don't have any room for spiritual things, you start thinking you can handle life on your own. Now, here's what happens. So you, that's what you do. You try to start handling life on your own. And so the first few, few things that come up in your life Satan will help you to handle them. Why? To keep you thinking you can handle life on your own. But eventually, you're going to find out you can't. And your life's going to crumble. But people get proud when they're full. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 15. It says, And I will send <coughs> grass in thy fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. So you see what else can happen when you get full, when you're full of the world, full of yourself, full of, full of things, you look for other gods. You look for something that is more exciting in life than Christianity. Now I want to tell you something. I think Christianity is exciting myself. Anybody who's trying to live it to its fullest is excited about Christianity. But we don't need excitement anyway. We need truth. That's what we need. But you start looking for other gods, small g. You start looking for other gods, something more exciting in your life. Now go to Isaiah chapter 65, verse 11. Isaiah 65, verse 11. Isaiah 65, verse 11. And the Bible says here, Isaiah 65, verse 11, but ye, that are, ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forget my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that finish first the drink offering unto that number. Therefore will I number you to the sword, ye shall all bow down to the slaughter, because when I called ye did not answer, when I spake ye did not hear, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighteth not. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl, howl for vexation of spirit. So, one of the things that happens when you become full of yourself, full of sin, full of the world, is you, you, uh, you always have that hungry spot. In other words, you want to find out answers to life. Find out how to do something, how to get, you're, you're, you're looking, you're looking. And I'm telling you, sin will not satisfy you. Uh, yourself will not satisfy you. The world will not satisfy you. So if you don't, if you don't empty yourself of all that stuff and start feeding yourself on the Word of God and get full spiritually, you're always going to have that hunger in your heart, looking for something. All right. <clears throat> now again, because you're so full of the world, so full of sin, so full of self, you don't care about the spiritual stuff. You're looking for answers somewhere else. See, go to Jeremiah chapter five, verse seven. Jeremiah chapter five, verse seven. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 7. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. When I had fed them to the full, then they committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlot's houses. So God had blessed them so they were full materially, and, and, but, they, but they went into sin. When you, get, when you are being full, you're not full uh, spiritually, you're empty spiritually, but you're full of this other stuff, you don't want anything else out of Christianity. That's why people never go forward. That's why people don't come back to church on a Sunday night. They're not hungry. Other things are filling them up. So they're not hungry for the Word of God. Listen, how could it be? How could, a, some, how could you explain some, a person who's heard thousands and thousands and thousands of sermons read the Bible through day after day after day, how could you explain uh, someone who's still hungry for the Word of God? What, what, where does that spiritual hunger come from? It comes from, it comes from emptying yourself of the world, emptying yourself of sin, emptying yourself of, of uh, all the other things that are offered to you besides God, and letting God fill you. You see? 
and you still want more. You still want more, even though you have a lot of, a lot of things. I'll explain it to you in a second. So there are Christians here who are full. There are, all, there are people today who aren't even in church this morning. You know, they're probably Christians. I don't know. I don't know this. But there are probably Christians who looked outside this morning and saw the snow falling and said, Oh, I'm not going to church today. You know what? That person's not hungry. That person's not hungry. See? <clears throat> a person who's hungry says, I'm going to church. I got to hear God's word. I'm starving. I got to get fed. I got to get fed spiritually. You see? And they, they want to hear. Now, you say, well, I don't like what you're saying. Well, sorry. I'm going to say it anyway. Because it's true. This world is long. And, long, and I'm telling you, God longs for his kids to get spiritually hungry. He's got a lot of food he wants to feed them. A lot of stuff he wants to feed you. He's got enough to keep you going and keep you going and keep you going. There's all kinds of things in this wonderful book. And for us just to use any kind of excuse in the world to turn away from hearing God's law, to turn away from reading God's word. I mean, you know, we, 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 we excuse away not reading the Bible every day because we have a lack of character. Well, then get some character and pick up your book, the book of God, and read it. Quit using that lack of character as an excuse. You see? And, and and all kinds of excuses are used. And it's those kind of people that are not spiritually hungry. And they're not spiritually hungry because their life is full of other things. Now, to, then there's the hungry soul. Now, notice what it says here in verse 7. To the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Even the bitter things are sweet. A hungry soul is a soul that craves for spiritual food. They crave for spiritual food. Job put it like this in Job chapter 23 and verse 12. He said this, Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You see, many, many times in the Bible, the word of God is compared to food. A hungry soul is a soul that craves for spiritual food and seeks that food. He has a strong desire for God's word. A hungry soul will be, a set, will be satisfied daily, but will soon be hungry again for more. You see, it's like this. I get up, God feeds me. I come to church, and God feeds me. And as I do what I learn, I'm hungry for more. That's what happens. I get, I get fed spiritually, I exercise spiritually, I put into practice what I'm learning, and I become more hungry spiritually. And God feeds me again, and I take what I learn, and I put it into practice, and I keep, keep, keep that process going, and I'm constantly spiritually hungry. See? Hungry soul, a hungry soul hungers for church. Go to Psalm 27, verse 4. Psalm 27, verse 4. Psalm 27, verse 4. The Bible says here, this is what David said. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. You know one thing I'm so thankful for for heaven? A lot of things. But I think we're going to have church every day up in heaven. We're all going to assemble together. And I hope, I, I kind of picture it like this. I hope it's like this. But I hope Jesus preaches to us. In fact, I hope he has Paul preach and Jeremiah preach. And he's, Jesus is a key speaker every day. But these other people come up and preach to us. All the old preachers of the past I never got to hear that, that passed away before I, I, was, uh, before I got saved. <clears throat> I hope I get to hear all of them too. But David wanted, on earth, he wanted to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of his life. I mean, it was Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, it was not enough. Uh, he, if, he had, if he was living today, he'd want more than that. Now, you know, we're supposed to assemble, we're supposed to assemble as the, and, and, and more and more as the day approaches. Not less and less. And then he said here, uh, to behold the beauty of the Lord. By the way, that's where you see God's beauty. A lot of places, could we sing these songs? You ever notice? A lot of them are talking about how beautiful God is, how awesome God is, how amazing God is. And to inquire in his temple. What does that mean? I want to get some answers for life. And so I want to go to church to hear, get some answers for life. You see, now, please, <clears throat> a hungry soul hungers for church. I feel sorry for, for those people who come only because you think you have to. 
Please don't get into this mode, that it's got this attitude that's going on in the Christian world today. The church is just not that important. It's not vital. It's not absolutely urgent that I get to church. Please don't get involved in that kind of an attitude. It just shows God you're not very hungry when you do that. When we, listen, okay, why, why do people push church out of their life? Because there's other things going on. Their life is full of other things. And that's why people like that can't come to church. They come to church whenever it's convenient for them, and they hear a hard sermon about, about their sin, and they get mad at it. They hear a bitter sermon of things on bitter, bitter things, like hard things, tough things, and they get upset at it. Whereas the person that is here because they love it, because they can't wait for church, they, they can't wait for it to be Sunday, they can't wait for it to be Wednesday, person like that, I can preach, I, I can look them square in the eye and call their name out and tell them the sins they committed this week, and they wouldn't get mad. They'd say, boy, thanks, Pastor. Thanks, but I needed that, man, I needed that. That shook me up, boy, I needed that. Every, to a hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. See? Now, a hungry soul loves God's word, hungers for God's word. First Peter 2, 2 talks about newborn babes desire, desire the sincere milk of the word. Psalm 119, verse 40. Psalm 119 and verse 40. Psalm 119 and verse 40. The Bible says, Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. Verse 131 of the same psalm says, I opened my mouth and panted. For I long for thy commandments. A hungry soul hungers for church, and a hungry soul hungers for God's word. I, I've got to have the word of God. I starve for it. I hunger for it. To them, the Bible never gets old. The Bible is always fresh. And you start reading it again. After you read it through, you start reading it again. It's like reading a brand new book. Like you never read it before. It's amazing. What an incredible, awesome book this is and a hungry soul hungers for it and it doesn't matter what they read in it man i've read i've read so many things in the bible where i said uh-oh I've, I've heard so many sermons where i said oh boy uh, i've heard them i've heard them and if i was full i would i would get away from the word of god i'd push it away because i don't want to hear that again if i was full i wouldn't go here preaching like that i'd go to some church that tickles your ears and makes you feel good so i wouldn't because i'm full and i don't want to hear any kind of bitter stuff I don't want to hear any hard things. I don't want to hear anything convicting. I'm full. I'm full of myself. I'm full of my sin. I'm full of the world. And don't rock the boat, preacher. So if you're going to do that, if I'm going to come in and have to listen to that, then I'm going to go somewhere else where I'll fulfill my church going stuff, but I won't have to listen to anything like that. That's a full soul. See, <clears throat> a hungry soul hungers to be fed no matter what. Go to Psalm 63. Psalm 63. Psalm 63. <clears throat> o God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. That's a hungry soul. See, it doesn't matter what feeds him no matter what kind of food god may give him it may go down sweet it may go down bitter but it doesn't matter i've got to be fed i've got to be fed you say what's the preacher going to preach about tomorrow night at this revival i don't i don't even know who the preacher is i know his name i never heard of him before i don't know what he's going to preach about but it doesn't matter if he gets up with the bible preaches out of the bible and, of course, I'm sure it'll be, it'll be good stuff because Brother Lowe's a good guy. He wouldn't have a, a guy in there that's not good. <clears throat> um, but it's going to feed me. So it doesn't matter. If he preaches against my sin, hey, you know what? I need it. Amen. I need it. Nail me to the wall if you have to. If I walk in there dirty, some kind of dirt in my heart, when I walk out, I want to clean it out. I don't want to get in the car the same way I got out of the car. I want to be different. I want to be changed. This book is a book of change. Psalm 63, verse 2. Psalm 63, verse 2. Uh, David said, I early will I seek thee, my soul thirsts of thee, my flesh longeth for thee. Verse 2, to see thy power and thy glory. So have I seen thee in the sanctuary. A, full, a hungry soul longs to see God's power 
and God's glory. See, a, 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 full, a full soul, a full soul, they, they don't really, God working, I mean, that's why people getting saved doesn't faze you. If somebody, if somebody walked in this door tonight, this, uh, tonight and sat here and got saved tonight, or even this morning somebody got saved, you'd say, <clears throat> yeah, that, so, big deal. It wouldn't faze you. Why? Because you're full. You're full. Seeing God do a miracle. Seeing God do a miracle. <clears throat> See, people whose souls are full, if they heard of a miracle being done by somebody, they're skeptical right away. They got a way of explaining it away. See, well, I mean, really, you don't, I don't really think that happens today, and it, that probably really wasn't true. See? <clears throat> but the hungry soul says, I want to see God work. I want to see God do amazing things in my life and in those people around me. I want to see God do amazing things in his house. I want to see him work. I love to see that. Man, they long to see God's power and God's glory. A hungry soul is hungry all the time. He never gets enough Bible. He never gets enough Bible preaching. I want more. I got to have more. I can't wait for more. You see, I don't know. When I got saved, I think hopefully it happened with you too. But automatically I got this incredible urge for the Bible. Before I got saved, I was just, I was hungry for God. I wanted to know I was going to heaven. But then I got saved and, and now, I are, now I'm saved. I am going to heaven. So God, the Holy Spirit came in and brought me this incredible hunger for the Bible. And boy, was I excited when I found out there was church on Sunday night. And it was a different sermon than Sunday morning. Wow, was I excited about that. I couldn't wait to go back to church on Sunday night. And then I found out they had a Wednesday night service. Wow, it was amazing to me. They had, a, they had another time you could hear it on Wednesday. Then I found out that these kind of churches had revival meetings. And they had Bible conferences and, you, and different Bible conferences you could travel to and hear the Word of God. I thought, wow, it's amazing. I love that. I need this Bible preaching. And then I found out early in my Christian life, within a few, few days, that is a Christian, he wants you to read the Bible every day. And I started reading this book. Oh, my goodness. What's in here is incredible. I really get excited when a Christian first gets saved and they, get, they really want to get into the Bible. I tell them, man, you are in for the ride of your life. There are so many incredible things in this book. It'll, it'll take more than a lifetime to learn them. It's amazing. You see, and I really believe that. I'm not just telling them that because, well, you're a pastor. You're going to tell them that. No, I mean that. That's a testimony from one Christian to another. It's an amazing book, and a full, uh, a hungry Christian is hungry all the time. Now, the Bible says God promises to fill the hungry soul. Psalm 107, verse 9, he promises to fill it with goodness. Uh, fill, fill it with righteousness, Matthew 5, 6. He promises to, to take our spiritual hunger and fill it up. God wants to feed you. No matter if it's his goodness, no matter if he shows you about living right, whatever God chooses to fill it with, God said, I'll do it. So if you're hungry, you come to Jesus and you get fed. John chapter 7, verse 37. He said, if any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. You see, if you're hungry or thirsty, you got this longing. He's talking about a spiritual longing. He said, just come to God and he'll fill it. Spiritual food and drink are available. You don't have to starve. God will feed you every day day. He will. He'll feed you every single day. Sometimes he feeds you a big chunk. Sometimes he feeds you a little morsel. But he knows what you need. You leave the spiritual diet up to him, he'll give you exactly what you need every day. He'll feed you. That's the way it is. Now, these are, these are the results. The results of being spiritually fed, of being, of being hungry and getting fed. Second Chronicles 15, 15. You'll have rest. <laughs> All right, you'll have rest. What does that mean? You'll, you'll say to yourself, I finally found the answer. I don't have to search anymore. I finally found it. The answers to life, I got it. How to be happy, I found it. How to have peace, I found it. I know how to get it. I've got to learn what the Bible says about peace. I've got to learn what the Bible says about joy. I've got to learn what the Bible says about happiness. I've got to learn about how to overcome this addiction or this habit that I have. But I found the answer. The truth. I got it. I got it. 
and you'll have rest. I know as I continue to grow, God is going to take care of all this. You know, Psalm 63, 1 through 3, you'll praise God. <clears throat> you'll praise God. <clears throat> you'll bless God. You'll do what you can to make him happy. You'll bring blessings to God. You'll have joy, Psalm 63, 5 through 7. <clears throat> and you'll be becoming like Jesus as you feed yourself spiritually. Now, how do I get this way? How do I get spiritually hungry? Psalm 73, 25. I want you to look at that. Psalm 73, 25. How do I get this way? You say, ah, I'm just not spiritually hungry. Psalm 73, 25. I'm going to help you get there. Whom I, I hope you're interested. Whom have I in heaven but thee? There's none upon earth that I desire beside thee. How do I get hungry? Realize he can meet my desires and my needs. He can teach me how to live life. He can teach me how to have peace. He can teach me how to love people. He knows how to handle problems. He has the answer to everything. I mean, I'm talking about my life. I'm a living, breathing human being. A person that goes through life. A person that goes through ups and downs. A person that goes through uh, personal relationships and struggles with those relationships. A person that goes that struggles with habits. Wants to be a better person. Wants to be a better citizen. Wants to be a better human being. Uh, he has got the answer to everything. You see, that's why David said, whom do I desire in heaven? The psalmist said, Who do, whom do I desire but besides thee? Nobody, because you've got the answer, God. I know where the answer is. I know who has the answer. He wants to teach me the answer. Man, I want to learn it. I need this. I want to learn. I'm not looking for uh, to go to see some shrink, to sit down and get some Band-Aid for my problem or take some pills for my problem. I'm not looking for any of that kind of stuff. I'm not looking to get some book and read how to do this or how to do that, how to fix relay. I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for worldly answers, worldly wisdom. I want the truth. I want what's really, truly going to work. Here it is. Here he is. See, realize that. Just realize that, that that's the truth. Satis secondly, satisfy the original desire and, and every hunger pain after that. You see, when you get saved, truly get saved, the Holy Spirit comes inside you. Yield and brings these desires. Yield to the Holy Spirit inside you. And go get the food he offers you. That means pick up the book. Pick up the Bible and start reading the Bible faithfully every day. And go to church faithfully every service and come with an open heart to what God wants to teach you and show you. You see, I hunger, I come to eat, I'm satisfied, I put it into practice, I hunger again, I come to eat, I'm satisfied, I put it into practice, and I hunger again, and just keep that going. Keep that going. You see, here's the thing. I never hunger to know where to find the answer or how to find it, because I already know. I never hunger to know where to find it or how to find it. I know. Where is it at? It's right here. How to find it? Read it and listen to it. Simple. No problem at all. So satisfy the original desire that the Holy Spirit brought inside you when, he got sa when you got saved. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> every hunger pain you have after that. Every spiritually hunger, hunger pain you have after that. And you'll have plenty of them if you're saved and following the Holy Spirit. Third, then, thirdly, then go where you can eat. Go where you can eat. All right? Now, it's my job as the pastor to feed you at church. It's your job as the Christian to come and take the food and eat it. Put it in your life. Receive it as being from God and put it into practice in your life. And then also, uh, then you get in your Bible, have your own personal Bible time, and let God feed you privately. Now, let me show you what the Bible says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. This is what Paul the Apostle told the pastors he was meeting with. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. It is the men of God's job to feed the people of God, the word of God. But I'll tell you what. I can, I can study, I can get you a beautiful plate of spiritual food, but if you don't come hungry, it's not going to matter. If you walk into this building, you're full of yourself, you're full of the world, you're full of sin. I could have the most wonderfully outlined sermon with all kinds of scripture to back it up, 
and it's not going to matter to you a bit. You'll walk out of here just as spiritually empty as you did when you came in. And you know what I hear a lot from, I've heard from people like that, oh, I don't go, I'm not coming back because I'm not getting fed. Well, if you're not getting fed, it's because you're not hungry. You're not eating. All right? You can dish it out on the plate, but I can't make you eat it. And the only way you're going to eat it is if you're hungry. And you're not going to be hungry if you're full of the world, full of self, and full of sin. You don't have any room in your life for spiritual things. You see? But go where you can eat it. Go to Psalm 42. <clears throat> Psalm 42. Psalm 42. And verse 1. The Bible says, As the heart path after the water brooks, so path my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou cast disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. And then in Psalm, uh, go to Psalm verse Psalm 143. Psalm 143. <clears throat> Psalm 143 and verse number 5. It says here, I remember the days of old. I meditate of all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Selah. Hear me speedily, O Lord. My spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake. Bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off the mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. I wonder this morning, do those two psalms describe you? You see how hungry that man was? Hungry for God, spiritually hungry for God. You see, people are hungry, spiritually hungry, because they found out the world doesn't feed you. The world doesn't feed you. You know what you need to do? Wake up and realize that. Everyone here in this building this morning who is hungry found that out one day. The world can't help you. They're not going to satisfy you. The things of this world, the people of this world, philosophies of this world, your own thinking isn't going to do it. Your sins aren't going to satisfy you. No. The people that are hung, spiritually hungry have found out that, that those things don't do it. But God will fill my hungry soul. God will do it. Now, <clears throat> to, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. Bitter in this verse means things that make you angry or discontented with self. Har a harsh taste. Hard to learn or digest. Disagreeable. But see, to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. See? So if you get mad and leave a church like this, it's because you're not hungry. It, it's, you're just not hungry. But to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet. There are some bitter things in this book. There really are. God tells you to forgive everybody. I've met Christians who say, I, they tell me, I, I, this one person in my life, They've really been bad to me during my life, and I just can't forgive them. Well, the Bible says forgive them. And, when, and then if you don't forgive them, you're not right with God. That's a bitter thing to take. That's hard to take. See, it really is. The Bible says love your enemies. Do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. If you got a, a real genuine enemy, that's hard to do. But God didn't ask you to do it. He told you to do it. That's a bitter thing to take. You see, there are some things that people do in their life, they really enjoy doing, and they look in the Bible and find out it's a sin to do. When you're preaching about that, that's hard to do. That's hard to change that. That's a bitter thing. There are some bitter things in this book. And if you want them to become sweet to you, then get spiritually hungry. Sweet means things that are appreciated. Things are appetizers. They feed your spiritual appetite. Things that are pleasing. Things that are precious or dear. Things that are friendly or kindly. Those are sweet things. To the hungry soul, every bitter thing is appreciated. 
Every bitter thing feeds their spiritual appetite. Every bitter thing becomes pleasing to them. Getting rid of that bitter thing becomes a good thing, a wonderful experience. Uh, getting rid of that bitter thing is precious to them because it makes their life better. You see, Revelation 10, 8 through 10, God makes, can make the bitter things taste sweet. Psalm 104, verse 34, meditating on God is sweet. Psalm, 1, Psalm 19, 10, Psalm 119, 103, Proverbs 16, 24, God's word is sweet. Proverbs 24, 13, and 14, God's wisdom is sweet. God takes the bitter and turns it into the sweet to the hungry soul. See, to the hungry soul, it doesn't matter what you're going to read in your Bible tomorrow. You don't avoid passages because you know what they say and you don't want to face that. You just read it. It doesn't matter. Give me, give me Genesis. Give me Leviticus. Give me Jeremiah. Give me Isaiah. Give me Hosea. Give me Mark. Give me Timothy. Give me 1 Thessalonians. Give me Hebrews. It doesn't matter. I don't care. Give me the verse. Give me the chapter. I don't care what it says. I want to learn it. i got to have it in my life. It's going to help me. Yeah, it may, it may be hard to take. It may taste rough. It may taste harsh. That's okay. I need it. I need it just as much as God loves you. God is merciful. God will forgive you. So you see, it doesn't matter what the preacher's preaching about. I don't go to that church because I like the preacher and what he preaches. He always preaches these really nice sermons that tickle my ears. I go to that church because the preacher gives me the truth. He may preach about the love of God today. He may preach about the anger of God today. He may preach about, about spiritual growth. He may preach about sin, and he may name the sin. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I need what he's going to give me. I'm hungry. I got to be fed. So it doesn't matter if it tastes sweet going down or it tastes bitter. That's okay. I want it because I'm hungry. I'm starving. I need this. You see, that's what God's looking for. That's the kind of person that God can work with. You see, God can take the bitter, see, and turn it into sweet to the hungry soul. People who are hungry never are satisfied deep in their hearts until so they get into a fundamental Bible-preaching, soul-winning Baptist church because it's the kind of church Jesus started, and therefore it's the only type of church that can really satisfy spiritual hunger. People who are hungry never get full. People who are hungry and never quit church. And spiritually hungry, I'm talking about. So I ask you this morning, are you hungry? You ought to say, Pastor, I'm starving. I'm starving. Now, I can tell you this morning, I can testify to you. I've, I've eaten a lot of good meals from this book. I've eaten a lot of good meals in church. And I'm not talking about in the fellowship hall. I'm talking about sitting in the pew. I'm talking, by the way, every sermon I preach, I preach to myself. So I've eaten a lot of good meals in church. But I'm still starving daily for God's word and weekly for the preaching of God's word. You see, so you're either full and despise or tolerate preaching or you're hungry and you love it. God says we're supposed to be hungry. And by the way, he can only work with a hungry soul. He can't work with a full soul because that full soul is full of himself, full of sin, and full of the world. And all that gets in the way. All that gets in the way. Now, he'll keep chipping away at you and trying to show you how foolish you're being. But I want to be wide open to whatever he wants to do in my life. And he needs someone who's really hungry for that. Whether it's feeding me bitter stuff or sweet stuff, it doesn't matter. I'm hungry. I want it. I hope you're the same way. Let's pray. Every head by our back. Father, thank you again for the word of God. I'm so grateful, Lord, for the things that you have taught me over these years. And I'm so grateful and excited for the things that you want to teach me in the coming days of my life. I don't know if I have days left. I don't know if I have weeks left or months left or years left. But you want to teach me some things before I leave this earth and go to heaven. You're going to teach me through my own personal reading. 
You're going to teach me through the preaching of your word. And I'm excited about that. I want to learn. I'm hungry. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. You influenced me to take the word of God and make it a huge part of my life, to listen to it at church with all my heart, to read it with all my heart when I'm on my own, and to take it and apply it to my life. And that has kept me spiritually hungry all of these years. Thank you for that, Lord. Now, please help all of us to ask this, ourselves the question, are we spiritually hungry or are we spiritually full? And if we're spiritually full, it's because we have too much of the world, too much of ourself, too much of our sins in our life. And one of the ways we can tell we're spiritually full is because we even loathe We don't like the bitter things at all, the hard things that we hear from God's word or read from God's word, and we don't even like the sweet things that we learn or hear from God's word. So Lord, please help us this morning to get that right and walk out of here hungry Christians, starving Christians, and to a hungry, starving Christian, Lord, you're ready to feed them. You want to feed them. You've got a lot of food you want to give them over these next years of their life. Thank you for that. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Now... (sighs) First of all, I'd like to ask you, we mainly focused on Christians this morning, but I want to ask you, are you a Christian? Are you a Christian? Now, you're not born a Christian. You don't get baptized and become a Christian. You don't join a church, a Christian church, and become a Christian. You become a Christian only one way, and that is you come to Jesus, and you realize you're a sinner because the Bible says you are, and you realize you deserve to go to hell and pay for your sins because the Bible says you do. And you realize that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ left heaven, came to earth. God the son lived a perfect life as a man here on earth. He never sinned one time. Then he went to the cross. And on that cross, God the father took every sin you've ever committed your whole life, past, present, future, and laid them on Jesus. And Jesus Christ was punished for your sins. He died your second death. And the Bible says, at the same time, he purchased for you the gift of eternal life. You can't earn a gift. Jesus bought it for you with his own life. He bought your way into heaven. He paid your way out of hell and bought your way into heaven with his own life. And the Bible says that he rose from the dead to prove that he was the Savior. He was God. He was the Savior. He could win the victory over sin and death and hell. You saw that, and you asked him to save you from hell and give you eternal life. That's how you become a Christian. That's the only way you can become a Christian. There is no other way. Now you ask yourself the question, have I done that? Have I asked Jesus Christ to save me from hell and give me eternal life? Am I trusting him and him only for salvation to get to heaven? How many say, Pastor, that's me. I am trusting Jesus and him alone. Nobody else, nothing else, just Jesus. I know for sure I'm going to heaven because that's who I'm trusting to get me there. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I'm saved and I know it and know it. You may lower your hands. Anybody say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I have some doubts. I am not. I could not say without a question in my mind that the moment my heart stops beating and I pass away, I'm going right to heaven. I might be able to say that, but I can't say that. And if I could see how I could say that, know that for sure based on what God said, I'd sure like to see that in the Bible. If that's you, you raise your hand. I'm not sure I'm saved, but I'd like to see from the Bible how I could go to heaven when I die and know for sure. Heads about eyes closed in just a moment. We're going to have an invitation song. Here's the invitation. If you're not sure you're going to heaven, you leave your seat, walk up, to, walk up to Brother Kevin and say, Kevin, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. If you tell him that, he'll direct you to somebody that'll take the Bible and show you God's way to heaven, right from the Bible. You'll have an opportunity to be saved before you leave today. If you've been saved, the next thing God wants you to do is get baptized. It's a step of obedience to God. If you've not been baptized, the Bible way, that's buried under water, to picture the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you've not been saved, baptized the Bible way, you can do that today. You walk up to Brother Kevin and say, I've been saved, but I've not been baptized. I'd like to do that. If you tell him that, we'll baptize you this morning. You got everything ready. If you're saved, baptized, you're not a member of the church, and you'd like to join the church, you come up and tell Brother Kevin, I've, I've been saved and baptized. I want to join the church. You, you tell him that. Now, if you're a Christian this morning, <clears throat> hopefully you're saying in your heart, I'm hungry, and I want to be fed, and I want God to feed me, and I want to stay spiritually hungry. I'm a spiritually hungry Christian. Hopefully you can say that. But if you can't, if you say this morning, I'm full, I'm full, because I'm full of myself, or I'm full of sin, or I'm too full of the world, I'm not really spiritually hungry. But I want to be hungry. 
I want to do that. Well, if that's you, then here's how you do it. Empty yourself by denying yourself and empty yourself of sin by confessing those sins and forsaking them. And then you'll be empty. And then God can fill you spiritually. You come up and tell God that, Lord, I, I, you know I'm full. I've filled myself up with myself, the world, or sin. I want to be spiritually hungry. I want you to feed me. Come and tell him that, and he'll help you to get to that point. All right, let's all stand. You'll obey the Holy Spirit as the song begins.